Um, I don't want to stare at the floor. That's something I learned in social thinking. Was there a book? <laughs> well, when I started at CIP in 2008, I wanted to rebuild my future and find something bigger and better than the downward spiral I had gotten caught up in. I had never been a negative or even a very depressed kid, and I was so happy when I started at CIP because I knew it offered me a new beginning and a new chance. I created my PCP and talked about how I wanted to become an advocate for children and families affected by disabilities. I talked about how I wanted to live independently in a small house with minimal supplemental support. I talked about how I wanted to find a job and contribute to the community, how I wanted to get a four-year degree, and I talked about how I wanted to, develop, wanted to develop social connections. And all of this over a period of four years has been achieved. I have since completed my Bachelor of Arts in English and Spanish at Brush University in Owensboro, Kentucky, graduating in May of 2010. And I'm now back. I now live in a house a few blocks from the center with my service dog Lucy for company. I've wanted to buy my own groceries and to manage my own finances pretty much independently. I have someone come by twice a week to assist with cooking and house chores, but otherwise Lou and I do just fine by ourselves. I've also learned to use the city buses so I can travel to and from work independently. Speaking of work, I recently secured a part-time paid position with the IU Center of Survey Research as a telephone interviewer three days a week. I love the feeling of contributing to a greater whole and getting to be part of a team. But perhaps my favorite job is the one that I'm not paid for, advocating for children with disabilities. I started as a reporter with the Indiana Daily Student in March of 2011. I was on the newspaper all four years at Brescia and loved it, so I thought, why not? Plus, writing has always been something I excelled at. When I asked what I liked when asked what I like to write, the first thing I said was, I do a lot of disability awareness stuff. I love stuff about autism in particular. Oh, my editor said. Interesting. Send me something. I'll take a look. I sent her a book review I'd just written over the novel Born on a Blue Day by Daniel Tamet about his life as an autistic savant. A few days later, she emailed me saying, we love this. We're definitely running it. You got anything else? I sent her two more book reviews, both also to do with autism, and said, just FYI, April is Autism Awareness Month. Maybe we could run these as a series? To which she responded, awesome. Thanks for the stuff. It's really good. Keep it coming. And come it did. By the end of my time with the IDS in May 2012, I had published 30 stories many of them on disabilities, including a local summer camp program which serves children with physical disabilities, I use Adaptive Technology Center, and a story on CIP occupational therapist Janelle Yachman's private business, Design for the Senses, which designs rooms specifically catered towards clients with disabilities. For the first time, I had three editors fighting over wanting me to be on their desk come next semester because I could churn out a story so quick and I was willing to create my own story ideas. I was also nominated for a story to take page one and although it didn't make it, being at the IDS taught me that people wanted me. Not because I was the last option standing, but because I was good at something. I had something and people wanted it really, really bad. It also allowed me to make friends who had no connections with CIP. And although I do have friends inside the program, one of my biggest goals during my stay at CIP was to develop more social connections in the community. I have to say that social growth has been one of the biggest areas of growth for me. I still keep up with my friends from the IDS, and I've also joined a weekly college Bible study group. One of the best things for me is going to a social thinking appointment with Jennifer and telling her what I did over the weekend, 
and being able to mention names she has heard about, but whose faces she has never seen. Like Megan Wicker, Laura Strawmeyer, Kaylee Dolan, Michael Oslin, and Jake New. Because I'm out with these people now, doing things like going to the movies and getting pizza and watching IU beat Michigan at the last second. <laughs> and I had to explain to every single one of them what CIP is. But perhaps equally as sweet. It's to them, I'm not different or strange. I'm hilarious and sweet and awesome and fun. To them, I'm just Adria. I took the confidence I found at the IDS and created business cards. Soon I started to get invited to IU classes and non-for-profits to share my story of growing up with disabilities and speak about how to be a good provider to individuals with disabilities. I've talked to neuroscience majors, pre-med majors, psychology majors, and therapeutic recreation majors. But my favorite group to talk to by far are education majors. Because I will tell them my story of growing up with various disabilities, including telling them in very minor detail because some of it's graphic, what all happened to me at school to land me in a place like Bloomington, Indiana. And then I will tell them, you have a chance. Every time you step into that classroom, you have a chance to take a child from a point in life that may not be looking so great to something better and brighter than they have ever known. Maybe not to the same extent the CIP has taken me, but you still have that chance, so take it. Human will and freedom of choice belongs to everyone. CIP is meant to be a transitional program, meaning a student receives services for a given period and then moves on to other things. But students, you're here now, so why not use the resources at your disposal? If you don't like your internship, go tell Kaylee. If you love your internship, go tell Kaylee. <laughs> Maybe she can get you more hours. Why keep the good news for yourself? Life is all about finding your passion. Finding the one thing that when you wake up in the morning, you feel like you have springs on the bottom of your feet, and you can spring and hit the ceiling. You're so excited. Life should not be a job. It should be a joy. I know my passion and purpose in life is meant to be working with individuals with disabilities. And I'll be honest, and Karen's right here and she can probably attest to it. I get so excited every time we have a CIP open house, I feel like, I feel like it's my birthday. <laughs> Knowing that something I could say could open the door to a better, more fulfilling life for a student is the greatest feeling in the world to me. And it means more than any paycheck I will ever receive. You see, when I see other students, I see myself, sometimes where I was five years ago, maybe longer, maybe a few months ago. But I also see how much they've grown. And so by celebrating how far your student has come this year, I also celebrate how far I've come. So I'd like to challenge you to take your chances and make the most of every day so that when you go to bed at night, you wake up thinking, it's going to be a great day because, you guys, you only get so many chances in life. And what is life about if it's not about living?